So this is something I would normally be doing in the winter, but as soon as I've got to move this pile of hedge gleanings, I thought I would do it now. And the reason I'm moving it is because I've got to finish cutting this track way out. And I'm going to make it flat across here to make this area usable for keeping the tractors and trailers and things on. So I thought I'd introduce you to my system of hedgerow management and all of the different things I get from it. So here we have a hedge which is mm, probably 200 foot long, something like that. But what I'm doing is I'm doing it in, in stages over possibly seven years, six or seven years. So these are the stages of laying the hedge, cutting it. So here we have, start with this piece here, which is what we've cleared out and laid this winter. So we're six months past this, maybe seven months now. So this is the first year. This is what happens. And we leave these tall standards for firewood, which then we cut and coppice once they're tall enough. So that's year one. This here is year two. So you can see that we've got a certain amount of growth coming back up after they've been laid. And this part is year three. So three years ago, this piece was laid. So as you can see, it's a lot taller and a lot bigger now. Um, the hazels are starting to get back to the stage where they'll start producing fruit. So I've left some which produce fruit each year. And we've got the trees for firewood as well. So Basically, I do about a 20 foot section each year, and work my way up through. So I should be getting on with the next 20 foot come this winter. And once I reach the far end, I'll come right the way back down and start at this end again and keep it in rotation. The great thing with this is that you end up with the various stages of tree growth continuously here. So the things that like it cut will live in that bit. The, bit, the things that like it more mature live in the older pieces. So it's good for wildlife in so many different ways and produces a large amount of usable material. So first sort of thing that we come across is things like this, which makes nice firewood. So I've got a pile of firewood which has been cut from this and each year I get a, a fairly good amount of firewood from this, from the larger stuff and the slightly smaller things. So the next things that we get are over here. Now these are all the gleanings from last, last winter. So. What we get is we get a lot of a lot of sticks which can be useful so we have things like this which is pea sticks so for doing bean poles etc so that's a very usable thing then as well as that the much smaller amounts the thinner stuff smaller things like this turned into wood chip for all sorts of composting or path making so that's another useful thing from it this lot here will get turned into biochar so I'll just use the 45 gallon drum I've got and charcoal that and then that biochar is activated with compost and then put on the ground so that's Basically, all of these things, plus all the fruits from 
the various different plants, uh, hazelnuts, sloes, rose hips, blackberries, all sorts of different usable foods come from this. So I can show you the firewood and some of the hazelnuts I collected last winter. So this is the continuance of the hedge. And this is the hazelnut tree, which I collected these hazels from last winter. And what happens is that they actually drop onto this track and I just collect them every day as they drop and that provides a nice cache of hazelnuts. Yeah. This is just trimmed on the sides this one and not cut for several years. It will be coppiced again when the next large hazel is ready to take over its production. So these are the nuts I got from it. So this is just one of the crops available from using my system of hedging. These are hazelnuts which have been dried. Yeah. These are all just from that one tree. Uh, you can see it's a large crop. Not every year is as good as this, but it's a it's a pretty average amount. And this is all free and it takes very little time to just spend a minute or two picking them up each day as they drop. And these can be kept as a good high value crop, lots and lots of nutrition in them. And they keep for, I keep them for about three years before they're finished using them. So that's this year's, this is the last of the year before. So they just need to be kept somewhere cool and dry and somewhere that the, the mice and squirrels can't find them. <laughs> so that's one of the crops. The next crop is the firewood. So here we have some of the firewood from the year before, which is small diameter and larger diameter sticks depending on whether I want a hot fire or a cooler fire so the smaller sticks burn hotter and they're quicker so for cooking they're ideal so that's the other fuel so this way the hedges can be managed over hundreds of years rather than the tractor system which destroys the hedges within about 80 years. So there's lots of evidence of the hedges around here with big gaps in, trees that are missing and very poor and they do need then metal fencing to keep the livestock in or out whereas with this system it's pretty secure. So once I cut the long poles I leave them stand upright in the dry somewhere for the first year. So these are from last year. So you can see they're sort of about 12 foot long and a reasonable size. And there's all sorts in here, mostly from the hedge or from the coppice work. Uh, I leave them in strategic places to dry out over the winter and then they'll all get chopped into little logs. So. Yeah. Any little visitors? <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so one of the products that we can make from this is a nice piece of hazel. This is out of the hedgerow. And what we can do here is turn this into a couple of fence posts, which then go into the ground for a few years. Once they've done their duty as a fence post and they start to rot at the bottom, you know, after five or six years, maybe a bit longer, there's no chemicals leached into the ground. These are free and then the rotten bit is left behind and the rest is turned into good seasoned firewood. So again, it has a temporary use in between and ending up being used as firewood. So we can make a, a fence post with this very simply. I'll just cut one to length and show you how. So first of all, we'll cut it to length. So placed it in the saw here. One fire log, ready to be seasoned a bit longer, one to be post. So let's go and get the next specialist piece of equipment. Specialist piece of equipment, an ordinary everyday axe, but we'll just make sure it's nice and sharp. So I'll just use this stone to put a keen edge on it. I'm going to make the thickest end the sharp end. So another thing that can be made out of the hedgerow is handles like this. It's a long hazel pole for a fork. And also other little things that can be made from the gleanings, stirrers and spoons and spatulas and all those sorts of things as well. And they can all be just made out of the scraps and when they're finished they turn into firewood, which is the end place for most pieces of wood that aren't treated. almost endless number of things that can be made. Uh, I also have a pole lathe, which the hedge and coppice work produces lots of timber for that as well. So I can turn various things with that and I shall be doing some more of that in the future. So here we have some cob blocks. I'll do a video on these next time I'm making some. Show that process. Okay, so let's go and have a look and see what the alternative system, the modern tractor driven flailing system, produces. Here's my charcoal kiln. I'll be firing this one up in a couple of future videos showing charcoal making all sorts of different products from the charcoal. Now this is a tractor maintained hedge and we can see the difference. Let's go and have a look. So here we have a 
typical result of many years of tractor maintenance. There's very little in the actual hedge itself. There's a few plants which are growing out and over the top, but actually in the hedge itself is almost nothing. So it's definitely dying and probably another four or five times of doing this, it'll be disappeared. There'll be nothing coming back. So, although it seems like it's a, a quick answer, it actually produces nothing. It litters the roads and the lanes with the wood chips. It actually makes a real big mess of the, the trees and it kills them eventually. So I'll take you up to another little spot along this hedge. And whilst it looks reasonable from the outside, when you actually analyse it, there's very little substance to it. You can see what's actually going on in here. So we've got a few odd sticks, a lot of dead brambles and a lot of space with nothing actually on the ground growing. Uh, a typical section of a tractor main hedge, looks like a hedge, till you actually look into it. And it's just a few brambles. There's no substance to it, there's no trees, there's very few of the original plants left and they're having a really hard time. The typical section here, it has a canopy but nothing in it. It's not a hedge anymore. It's a couple of stumps with a few branches on the top. And on a bit further, we can see it's even more progressed to its degradation. Basically just a few brambles and clear space. And the actual hedge has nothing in it. So, inevitable result. One destroyed hedge. So, there we have it. One non-productive, non-stop resistant, unpurposeful hedge mostly. Now, the hedge I was talking about that I've been maintaining that way is actually that row of trees down there and that's the result of doing it on a successive laying and trimming for wood. So whilst I'm here I might as well take you on a little tour around some of the land here so it's mostly open land, grows a lot of herbs, there's trees, fruit, vegetables, charcoal making. It's a wonderful habitat for an awful wide range, range of species. There's a pond in amongst those trees which have planted all of these trees. There's willows, moor plants, hedgerow plants, there's charcoal making coppice in this area here which goes right up to the end of the valley and then I have the three trees which were here when I first came which are these magnificent oaks which I presume would have formed a hedge line across the top of this hill and they're the remnants that are left This is the valley. Another 
tool handle made from wood here. This is a piece of oak. Again, a coppiced piece turned into a handle for the hammer. And this head was made in the forge here. And we use the charcoal from the coppice to run the forges to make the tools. So it's again a complete closed loop uh, system. I hope you found this interesting and can see the many advantages of maintaining hedgerows in a holistic manner. So getting lots of extra products all for the same hedgerow. So if you have any questions or observations, please comment.